How are you doing, Tara? I'm okay. How are you? Well, it is raining very hard here. But unlike the President of the United States of America, we this show can, in fact, function in the rain. We will not melt. We will not. No. Unlike his spray tan and hair. <laughs> it's fucking... Uh, but you know what? What? Dan just fixed this. Its batteries were dead, but he replaced them. So you have him to thank for that. I'm trying to look back in Sir Mixalot's history, and I'm trying to think. There's a, <laughs> there, there's a dark weekend at some point where the bills are piling up, and they're taking his couch out to be repossessed, and this contract shows up in the mail and says, Hey, you want to put your song on a dancing pink hippo? We'll give you like this. He's like, fucking sign it. Fucking sign it. I don't care. Let's do an okay. I thought he had a reality show. Is that our new definition of doing okay in America? They pay you a lot of money for it. <laughs> like. You could become president. <laughs> Uh, like we watch marriage boot camp on Fridays because I'm trashy and there are people that show up comment? on that show that literally all they do is reality shows like that's their job nice work if you can get it I guess alright shall we get to the horribleness sure as if the idea of fucking reality TV isn't horrible enough already alright here we go we should have a reality show that would be fun mm -hmm. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call crazy. What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, um, I'm crazy do you remember last week? So Just last week, less than seven days ago. Oh, no, a little, little over seven days ago. When, when a, a woman at a uh, restaurant... Crashed through the ceiling, naked from the waist down. Do, do you recall this occurrence? I, I do, I do. I want to point out, this is barely a week later. Police! Man with no pants falls through Waffle House ceiling. What really? the fuck? Why the fuck is it always a Waffle House? It's... What is it? I've never been to a Waffle House because I'm a fucking Yankee. Huh. So, like, what is it about that place that makes people insane? Tuscumbia, Alabama, I think I said that right. Police in Alabama say a man not wearing any pants fell through the roof of a Waffle House during a botched burglary and fought patrons before leaving. First Time rule of burglary, pants. Times Daily reports Tuscumbia Police Detective Wes Holland says 27-year-old Glenn Bost is being sought on criminal mischief and burglary charges. Another suspect hasn't been identified. So this was a two-person operation, but only one pair of pants. Police Chief Tony Logan says the Birmingham man tried to break into the restaurant's office through the ceiling. Logan says Boss went into a bathroom, tied the door shut with his pants and climbed into the ceiling. He says an underwear-clad boss then fell into the dining area and fought off patrons trying to detain him. Logan says boss then fled, leaving behind his pants that contained his driver's license. You remember Boondock Saints? Uh-huh. Who can forget Boondock Saints, right? Mm. We You're try, gonna though. We the try. You're gonna need the rope. You're gonna need the rope! You're gonna need the fucking rope. You and your fucking rope. And the reason you're going to need the fucking rope, the fucking rope, is so you don't have to tie the door closed with your pants. 
you didn't even just make, you know what they make tiny little bungee cords they do they sell them they in, do. have you ever seen those like cheese ball buckets with the screw on top the puff cheese balls yes they sell buckets of bungee cords just like that really they do we got some at walmart when uh, sarah was moving no mike new jersey does not have waffle house so, did he? I mean, you and those things, they're like about this long and they can fit right in your pants and they cost nothing. But no, I bet he was, I bet you, I swear to God, I bet he was thinking, you know what would be slick if I use my pants? Because then they won't see me going in there with some, something to tie the door with. And then I left my wallet in the pants. pants. Peggy, you are snoring so loud, girl. Also, I love, I love how, I love how when he crashed into the dining area, everybody was all like, "Test your might." <laughs> all of a sudden, it was more. Finish combat. him. <laughs> Finish him with your smothered, slammed. I don't know. They have whole lingo there. Smothered, covered, naked. They probably. Now that I think about it, in that video game, the different layers of hash browns would probably do different levels of damage. <laughs> I mean, like the, more, the more toppings you have on your hash browns would do more damage. Well, it, it, sh it will, in fact, eat a hole through your stomach, so. Um, I'm just, I'm thinking of all these people sitting down to their meal, and a guy falls through the ceiling. They, I swear to God, one dude with Sarah's like, finally. It's about damn time. Day my whole life. <laughs> it's about time. We actually at a, at a a LARP years ago. Oh god. A big feature of the LARP is afters, which means you thirty nerds invade some poor, unsuspecting all night diner. Denny's, and, Waffle House, Huddle House, yeah, one of those. Yeah, and them for a few hours while you I talk hop. about characters. Mm -hmm. well, we were in IHOP, and there were, I think, like 40 of us. And some fucking douche bros fresh from the club decided to have a fist fight that wound up annihilating the entire dining room. <laughs> like, they bumped into our people, they knocked shit off our table, and we were like, we're not the problem. You, you, yeah, who spends their all their entire week waiting for a throwdown in the all night diner? As I understand it, that's fifty percent of what Waffle House is for. <laughs> I know. I think everybody that goes to Waffle House is waiting for the day they get to throw down on the Waffle House. I think <laughs> that's the business model because <laughs> it seems to happen a fucking lot. I mean. Honestly, it's one of the best places to go after you've been drinking a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. They unlimited coffee, big starchy food to fill your gut, soak up the alcohol. Yep. I'm an IHOP girl because they have that neon red strawberry syrup that is so fucking good. And you can't get that anywhere else. Like, I've never found it. So let's, let's move on to something topical, shall we? We just had a big election. We did. And, there's and some of it's not over. CNN is advertising election night part two. This time it's personal. The electric boogaloo. They're doing a fucking sequel of election night tomorrow. <clears throat> and we're making, Florida. we're making a big deal about the orderly transition of things and how these should work and, you know, you should behave. Um, this guy, I have, I, I want to point out this, this dude is a grown-ass human being, a very grown-ass, a super adult. There's a, there's a point in your life where you get to be adult, and then there's super adult. Super adult is when no one cards you. Even if they're supposed to. They just look at you and they're no. like... We, where did we go? Was it when we went out for Halloween? No, we went out for dinner one night, and we ordered margaritas, and yeah. the guy was like, oh, I need to see some ID. And I reached for my ID, and he goes, no, I'm just kidding. And I was like, you little shit. Motherfucker. <laughs> like, if I reach, you just let me fucking reach, 
<laughs> wow. Well, anyway, like, here. I know I'm with Father Time here. But God damn it. Really? Here's, yeah, here is from the pinnacle of maturity. Judge loses re-election, so he sets all the defendants free. Okay. Uh, wow. A day after Judge Glenn Devlin of Houston lost his re-election bid, he released nearly all the juvenile defendants who appeared before him as long as they answered no when he asked if they planned to kill anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's responsible. It is not known how many juveniles were released, but the number, according to the outlet, is at least seven, four of whom faced aggravated robbery charges. Judge Devlin also rescheduled all of the cases to be heard during the first week of January, which is when Democrat Natalia Oaks takes the bench. Such a reaction appears intentional. Quote, if I release you, will you go murder anybody? And so, if the juveniles said no, they were released. <laughs> Now, 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 don't lie. <laughs> I, as, oh my God. He never, this has never been done before. This is not a normal procedure. No. <laughs> this Generally, was, and judges are supposed to be held to like one of the highest standards. Uh huh. They're supposed to be the most honest. I mean, I know we have fucking. Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh now and fuck us all, but like they're supposed to be the most reserved, the most mm -hmm. mature, the most non-biased and not just be like fuck y'all, you fired me exactly, it's pretty, I mean have you, alright, you have in your life had an older relative pitch a hissy fit an older male relative you, you all know You've had at least one, be it a father, grandfather, uncle, whatever. You have had an older man. Well, fine. Fine then. I don't want to do that anyway. I want to watch football. We have to watch yeah. a Macy's parade. Fine, whatever. You can watch a Macy's parade. And, they, and they'll, like, fling the remote at you. Or they'll go outside and they'll, like, angrily drink. Yeah. You've always, you've all dealt, this is the, the, the grown-up hissy fit. Or they'll just leave the party and play with their phone in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> Dan didn't do that. No, but that Dan was, was at a family party where another family member did do that. I'm not going to name names. As I say, I may have made him do that. We, we, we all had that old, this is, this is the equivalent of that. Only this is the law. Yeah. Oh, you guys don't want me to be your judge? Enjoy your crime wave of juveniles. Not my problem. I'm not. This is what you wanted, right? This is this is how you want. I'm not judge. Not my problem, right? No, no. You could have voted for me, but you didn't. So this is what you get. It's not I my mean, fault. I feel a little less bad about it being as they were all juvenile offenders because I think in general we're a little harder on juvenile offenders than we should be in a lot of cases. True. I mean, if they fucking murdered sixteen people, then yes, you need to go to jail. But, you know. But just just to be a dick. Just to be like, <laughs> fuck y'all. I mean, there, there, there are jobs you can just, you know, flip the finger on the way out the door. Yeah. You know. I mean, you just phone it in. Yeah. Like, fuck it. If you're at retail or something, if, if you're, you know, a temp at some place, it's fine. But when I gave my notice at Sephora, they were really concerned. I was just going to go double barrel sarcasm on the cu on the customer. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always threatened that, like, the day I don't need to work retail anymore, someone's going to wander into Sephora and be like, do you have mascara? And I'm going to be like, no, we at Sephora are really offended by the standards of beauty put on women. <laughs> so my manager was like, okay, so, and I'm like, I'm going to be nice. I'm not really going to, I'm not going to fuck up your life. Like, I promise. But he was I like, could, oh, but you, I you won't. Said that. You said you were going to do that. And I'm like, no, I'm not really going to do that. <laughs> you know, it, it's stuff like, they. Sh this is exactly why you're not still a judge. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's probably behavior like that. That is the reason you're not reelected. Yeah. You know, you, you, you probably were not of the proper suited temperament although i do say and this is a strange little plug um if you want to hear about the temperament of judges and the uh, american court system 
um, Serial season three. They're spending oh. a year in a Cle- they spent a year in a Cleveland courthouse. Mm. Just go and the shit, just regular cases, everyday stuff, and the shit that comes out of there is just like mind blowing. How petty these fuckers can be. It's it's disturbing, and they're allowed to be because that's America. Ah, oh, so sorry. okay, let, America. Uh, here is an well. This one you can take at face value as a hissy fit, but this is uh oh, this motherfucker. This is this is one of those. Uh, sorry, I assumed your gender, motherfuckers. You know those assholes who like pretend. No one is. No one has ever who has ever been misgendered has ever been like. I'm sorry. Did you assume my gender? No, they've never done no. that. But this Only is assholes on Twitter do that. Well, this is an asshole who's should have outgrown it and has not. 69 year old man seeks to change age to 49. Oh, this fucking asshole. This fucking asshole. <laughs> self styled po- fucking asshole. Self styled positivity guru Emil Rattleband thinks age is just a number. His number is the It Dutch- is. It is the number of years you have been alive. The 69 year old TV personality asked a court in the Netherlands to approve his request for a new birthday. That would officially make him 49. Quote, with this freedom of choice, choice of name, freeness of gender, I want to have my own age. I want to control myself. Now, why? Why does he want this? If I go on Tinder, then I get women from 68, 69 when women are there. He can't get hot enough, young enough girls on tinder so he wants to lie about his age here's the thing you don't need a legal waiver to lie about your fucking age on tinder no you don't you could just lie no the reason he's doing this all the time the reason he's doing this is he's he's going all in on the bad faith uh to to prove a point well he does not look 49 well if you can decide what gender you are then i can decide what age i am that's how that works. So fuck you. Because nothing means anything anymore, right? So I can just do this. No. No. No, honey, no. no. Unless you possess the time stone <laughs> and can physically make yourself 49, then cool. You're actually, 49 now. Actually, the time stone by itself does not have the inherent ability to reverse time. He would also need to possess the power stone in order to empower the time stone to reverse the aging process because on its own On it... the day Stan Lee died <laughs> You're gonna do this <laughs> You're haunted You're gonna have a lifetime of cameo haunting <laughs> I feel bad for you I would love to be haunted by Stan Lee Like you're gonna get on a bus and he's gonna be driving it I would love it to be like, hello there, true believer. Okay. You're going to be like nodding off to sleep and somebody's going to scream in your ear. Excelsior. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's just, it's, it's the the whole, this bad faith motherfucker. I hate this shit. And on top of it, it's the grossness factor because he wants younger pussy. (laughs) Listen. Fellas, you get to a point in your life where you're not going to get that 25-year-old pussy anymore. And trying makes you gross. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. Don't. Just six. You're almost 70 years old. My God. I promise your dick doesn't work like you're 40. To have just to have this in his brain, that this was a sensible and rational thing to do. To prove a point. This was pro- This is the proving my point. Bullshit. Yeah. Hey, you, you know what else helps with that? Context. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Context is crucial. It's not just well. Anyone could be whatever the fuck they want. So I'm gonna be younger. Ha ha ha. Also, Stop. you're an old white dude. Yeah. You're literally the least depressed demographic on the planet. Shit. Yeah. So don't fucking cry to me about how you're being discriminated against because you're an old white dude. Mm. Y'all run the planet. 
Sit down. Uh, let, let's. Th this is. This is kind of. This one's actually. Oh my god. Um. So fake it till you make it. That that's that's the the way of saying it. You're supposed to act if you're if you're trying to get into a business. You're supposed to act a certain way. You're supposed to act I mean, like that's you've what I've been doing on your show for going on a decade. <laughs> you're supposed to act like you've already arrived, like you have authority, like you're on the. I can respect that. This band took it a wee bit too far. Um, L.A. band threaten with an I because. There's oh no, that's their name. Faked a fan base to land a European tour. <laughs> no one attended. That's so sad. The Los Angeles band threatened have taken this idea to a level previously thought unimaginable. The band was able to book an entire tour of Europe despite having no fan base whatsoever, and it's all in the process of crashing down around them. To do it, the band's frontman and leader, Jared Threaten. That's not a real name, <clears throat> I don't think, because everything is spelled weird. Posed as a non-existent booking agent to land the gigs, used faked live footage of an allegedly packed show in L.A., bought Facebook likes, events RSPPs, and YouTube views, and lied about ticket sale numbers to swindle venue owners and talent buyers into taking on the shows. Um, posts started making the rounds on social media when the tour kicked off on November 1st in London. A post by the venue The Underworld, which hosted the show, alleged the band's agent claimed the band sold 291 tickets in advance, but only three people turned up. <laughs> that can't be a good feeling. That, that, that's, that's not. Uh, it didn't get any better. Exchange in Bristol realized they had a similar hoax pulled on them a few days later when the promoter saying 180 tickets been sold, um, only to have no one show up but a few people from the opening band's guest list. Oh. <laughs> then you did a little digging. The and only people that came were people that got in for free and not people you let in for free. No. Um, then you did a little digger and dis digging and discovered that Threaten's online numbers have been faked with all 100 of the people marked as attending the Facebook event page living in Brazil. I didn't even know you could do this. Like, I didn't know this level of con was possible. Well, it would have been a con if it worked. This is just an embarrassment. He's going to owe these places a lot of money. A lot of money. Because they, they, they make their money off a percentage of the ticket sales, and if they didn't yeah. actually exist, y'all fucked. I mean, for this to be a con, it would have had to have worked. You know, This isn't a case of, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. Nobody knows who the fuck you are, dude. Well, and like... How shitty does your band have to be that you can't even get random ass? Because there's always random ass drunk people yes. who will go to some random ass show. Right. That's just that's people how people show up for a bar. <laughs> yeah, people will show up just to drink, and there happens to be a band there. That's how. That's how the music industry at that level works. Like, yeah, nobody <clears throat> comes out of the gate with fans. No. And it took us, I so mean... So how sad is it that, like, they couldn't even get randos in off the street? You gotta build your way into a fan base. You can't just... Oodle. You can't just make one happen. Because ever uh, You can't... You can buy all the buzz you want, but, you know... It, I mean, it, you can fake... You can have... You can buy a fan base as long as you never want to do anything in person. And this was to do things in person. Yeah, but all those fake people are fake people. Yeah, I, they're not going to manifest. You are going to be. You are going to be in the shit for so they much should have money. Performed at a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody at the Waffle House really gives a shit. I mean, the, the people are. The, the, uh, until the goddamn Waffle House song comes on the jukebox and the fucking people in that Waffle House start singing, and it is... There's a not, Waffle House song? There's a Waffle House song, Tara. 
Do you know the Waffle House song? No. It's on the jukebox. Is it like an, an anthem? Do you Kinda. have to salute? No, it's, it's like this... Th- Google it, folks. I can't put it on my show because of rights issues, but go- Google it. It's... <sighs> That's a, that's a fair question. Was was the band any good? Apparently, I don't know. But they've made people too angry now. Yeah, now you're now you're screwed. You could be fucking Brian May. <laughs> no one's gonna come see your rats now. No one's gonna book you. Yeah, this is from a a, ban- a a bar called the Asylum. Uh, we had a show last night where the singer told everyone he had sold 150 tickets actually sold one ticket and that wasn't so much sold as it was traded for a coffee yeah you know one one t- oh let's let's this let's this is this next one is from uh the uh department of um inappropriate escalation uh this is from west columbia I believe this is, yep, South Carolina. Oh, girl. This is about 90 miles away from me. Um, and uh, the appropriate, this is a disappropriate response. This, this is, bad things happen, your tire goes flat, someone splashes you while you're, tr- while you're walking down the sidewalk, um, you lose a cigar. There are ways to handle that. This is not the way you handle it. Man vandalizes West Columbia Church businesses because cigar was stolen. West Columbia police arrested a man over the weekend after he caused thousands of dollars in damage to various churches and businesses. Uh, Deshay Butler, 30, broke several windows and glass doors at the eight establishments because, he said, someone stole his cigar. Police were called to several establishments on Augusta Road, including two beauty salons, uh, La Iglesia de Dios de Proficia. La Iglesia de Dios de la Profecia. You're, very, you're better at this than me. Which is the church of the... <clears throat> the church of the gods of the prophecy? Liberty Financial <laughs> Services and a TD Banks after people began discovering broken windows at 3.30 a.m. Saturday. After searching the area, officers found Butler walking the same block as the businesses and questioned them. Butler admitted he broke the windows. When asked why, Butler told police, I broke the windows because someone stole my cigar. Not the reason. What? How does... Cops aren't going to be like, oh, well, we're very sorry, sir. If it wasn't for my horse, (laughs) I wouldn't have spent that year in college. You know what costs more than a cigar? $5,400 in property damage. Fifty four, Which your grumpy ass is going to pay for. Eight, from eight different businesses. They all have their own lawyer. They are all pressing their own charges. One of them being a church. A church! Why Jesus did you... He doesn't care about your cigar. God, give me back my smokes! Well, that's like, not how did the... all these businesses conspire to steal his cigar? Is that what he's alleging? <laughs> okay, look, you guys. We got one last job together. Like, his family really wants him to quit smoking and is like, listen, if any of you see him in downtown with a cigar, you need to take it. And he finally uncovered the conspiracy. <laughs> it's some fucking Infowars bullshit. He stole his cigar. You stole my cigar. Did you see Alex Jones's latest video? No. He now identifies as a gay frog. I'm not kidding. He does this whole video in like a frog costume and there's a whole song about how he's a gay frog because of chemicals in the water. He's gone round the bend. Well, he has no more PayPal, no more Stripe, no more YouTube, that last, no more Twitter. That last thin yeah. frayed thread that he was hanging on by? Ah, it's a dust. Fucking cigars. Fifty. I have been. I have been in public and have have been panicked about. I've I've uh, locked my keys in my car before. 
Uh, I left my phone in, in a library and freaked out for a second. They kept it. Very good people. I've had moments where it's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. And never once have I decided, well, there's windows here, so I have a solution. I'm just going to break all the windows, and that'll fix my problem. Right. If I break all the windows, justice. And here's the thing, like, I, I am a big believer in breaking shit because you're mad. <laughs> it's it's a, a constant annoyance to my poor husband, but, like, I'll just throw shit if I'm annoyed. Don't do or that. Or bang on something because it's not working right. Yeah. Don't do that. Takes it away from me and fixes it and gives it back. And so I get it. I get that it fucking feels good to punish something. I'm that bitch that if I stub my toe on the wall, I punch the shit out of that wall for hurting me. She is a little bit like Frankenstein sometimes. <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh, burn. So I get it. Like, I understand sometimes you're just mad and you want to punish something. Punish your own stuff. Just punish things that already uh, belong to you. We have one last one tonight from Florida. So of course, this is Florida. It's like the capital of this show. This is, I guess this is our hold my beer of the week. Um, man wearing Crocs breaks in Jumps into crocodile pool at St. Augustine Alligator Farm. They're not going to accept you as one of their own because you're wearing those. <laughs> that's, that's not what that means. Florida man was injured Tuesday after he broke into a St. Augustine Alligator Farm zoological park and jumped into a pond full of crocodiles. Uh, John Bergens, the park's director, told WJAX TV workers were getting the exhibit ready for opening Tuesday morning when they found evidence of the break in. Several lamps and signs were broken. A statue in the middle of the crocodile pond, uh, which can only be reached by swimming, was toppled. Bergen said employees found a pair of shorts and a crocod and Crocs brand rubber shoe floating in the pool and thought it might be a prank. I can <laughs> see how they think that. Did they eat the guy? Oh, they, they sampled. Um, <clears throat> staff Damn. members said they called police after finding blood. Bruin said a lot of blood was found at the top of the zip line platforms that sit over the crocodiles. When police you zip line over crocodiles? Yeah, it's Florida. That doesn't sound like a good idea either. It's Florida, Tara. When police got to the park, employees told officers about the blood. Officers res reportedly responded, Oh, I think we already got the perpetrator in custody. We got somebody who told us they were bitten by an alligator. A man wearing only his boxers was located in a nearby neighborhood. Officials say he had blood on him. Officers asked the man if he was messing around at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm, to which the man said, Oh, no, sir, I wasn't. He appeared to have several bites on his foot. None of the crocodiles were hurt. What did you think was going to happen? Uh, what the hell? What was this? What, what in the fuck was this? Like, they're fucking basically dinosaurs. They are. They're, they're the last... Crocodiles and alligators are some of the last reptiles of that era who fundamentally have just... They were like, you know what? We've done enough evolving. We're set. We're good. We're good. We're, good. we're fine. We don't need to do anything else. Yeah. Apex we're, Predator. They're already like scaly death paddles. We're good. And you decide you're going to jump in and hang with them. They don't want to hang with you. They they want to eat you. Is what's yeah. good. You're you're just meat. Yeah. Or a big toy. Or, yeah. Or both. Yeah, a meat toy. And, of course, like he was... Like those piggy ears you give your dog. Of course he was wearing Crocs, because, of course, this is Florida, because, of course. What's sad? Like, Look, I got your shoes on. I, I, I'm like one of y'all. The saddest part about this is be like, he was wearing Crocs in the Croc... It's Florida. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. The minute you say Florida, it's like, oh, all right, well, yeah, that makes sense. I understand. And, like, did he pull his pants off, or did the Crocs pull his pants off? By which I mean the living animals, not the shoes. Because <laughs> he lost his shoe, his pants. Lost his pants. And one of his Crocs to the Crocs. He lost a croc to the... Jesus Christ. They claimed a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Stop mocking us! Belittle our people, will you? <laughs> It'd be great if about... If, like, this is why I can't run a zoo. Because I would just weather a bunch of, like, single crocs and hang them haphazardly above the crocodile display. And people be like, what's that? Oh, that's their trophy. <laughs> They find those shoes very offensive, and if you wear them in here, they will take one. And the, the leg. Th this this man is... No, there were pants, because they found the pants in the pool. Yes. He was just in his boxers walking around. Yeah, that's true. My, my zoo would... Actually, I would have, like, hippos and big cats. Oh, that's, that, that's safe. Sure. Not together. <laughs> but I'd have, like, tigers and lions and lynxes and hippos, and that would be my zoo. So, Africa. <laughs> I was kind of curious why you guys went to Hawaii for the honeymoon, honeymoon and not like safari for like uh, hippos and we shit. We did a tour of all the lost filming locations. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't have hippos, Tara. Well, only half the lost filming locations, actually. We're going to go back and do the other half. And there were feral cats all over the place that were friends with us. So, uh, just I, the, this fucking guy. Like, what? What did you expect was going to happen? Oh my god, he was in the exhibit for about four hours. That's kind of impressive. He's fucking Ooh. around with the alligators for, and all he did was get his foot chewed up. You are lucky you still have all your parts, and that you only lost your pants. Four hours. So yeah, the the first thing we've learned this week is you could say the most ridiculous scenario possible, but if you if you finish that sentence with in Florida, everyone will just accept that as a given. That's completely yeah. done. They'd be like, they will take you at your word because fucking Florida. Yeah. Like. like that could never happen, Florida. Um, oh, yeah. Um, we've learned that sometimes a cigar is just a cigar and not an excuse to go on a window-breaking rampage. <clears throat> we've learned that you can't actually fake it till you make it if you're actually faking things. Yeah, like a fan base. Yeah. Um, That's not going to work out when you try to have shows, especially if you tell the venue that you sold it out, because then they're not going to try and sell real tickets. Uh, we've learned that your stubborn ass bad faith argument to prove a point isn't going to get you laid. No, and actually now you've made yourself famous for being gross. Yeah. So you're going to get laid even less. We've learned there are some jobs you can flip off on the way out the door and some you really should yeah. not. The judge's bench, not one of them. And finally, we've learned that people are ready to throw down in the Waffle House. Chuck E. Cheese? Waffle House. Not safe. That's, that's where white people go to fucking rumble. <laughs> Just give them a reason, man. Just give them a fucking reason. Just forget the ketchup, and it's on. Hey, there will be hash browns to pay. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? I want to believe that when we were younger, this was not true. But it was. We just didn't have so much documentation. Yeah, I feel like... We think people are more terrible now. I think we're just more aware of how terrible people have always been. Yeah, now we have the receipts. Right. 